How's it going, everyone? Have you ever been unsatisfied with your drum sound? Either because they were recorded in a room that was not acoustically treated, the drums were out of tune, or you simply didn't take the time to place your microphones just right? Unfortunately, this does happen, so I wanted to make a video about how you can fix this issue. If you stick through this video, I will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how you can quickly and efficiently use drum replacement to fix this issue in Pro Tools. I hope everyone is having a great day. My name is Jake, and let's talk about drum replacement. So the first thing that we need to do is decide on which element in the drum kit we want to replace. I've already decided that I really do not like this kick sound. Let's take a listen. So I've already spent a significant amount of time here trying to use normal processing, EQ, compression, and even some harmonic changes to kind of shape the way this kick sounds with very little success. The issue here is that there are some harmful frequencies around the fundamentals that I wanna be keeping in the high and low end of the kick. So I figured the best way to fix this issue is through drum replacement. So we're gonna show you how to do this step-by-step -step today um, in Pro Tools in a one specific way. Now, this is gonna change depending on what drum replacement plugin you're using, and I guess obviously which digital audio workstation you are using. But for this particular instance, this is the quickest way to replace your drum your drum tracks. So, like I've said, we've already we've already decided that we want to replace our kick. Now the next thing that we want to do is choose what sample we want to use. Now today I'm going to be using Easy Drummer which is a drum simulation. And essentially what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking one element, which is gonna be the kick from the drum simulator and recording it onto an audio track and then replacing each audio signal that Easy Drummer created with the transients of our original kick track. Now there are a bunch of other plugins such as Dremagog, um, there's Trigger 2 by Slate Digital and Superior Drummer 3, I think is is pretty good for this. But like I said, there's a bunch of different uh, plugins that you can use that will help you. Today we'll be taking a look at Easy Drummer because this is what I'm most familiar with. So the first thing that we need to do is create our stereo aux track that our Easy Drummer plugin will be on. I'm gonna move this up to our kick and we're gonna call this kick sample. And we're going to load up Easy Drummer, usually found under Instrument. Where are we at? Okay, here we go, Easy Drummer. Now, I've already decided that we want to use this Ludwig 60s Open. Let's take a listen. A nice, even kick drum sound, a little low end, a little high end. So I think this will replace the sound of our current kick very nicely. Now, like I said, we wanna be recording this kick sample, which is currently in the MIDI format, into an audio signal so that we can replace it with our original kick track. So the way we wanna do this is we have this record button here. I'm gonna click play and it's gonna begin recording on the MIDI track. So I'm just gonna do one hit. So there we go. We have one solid kick hit. That's all we need. So now our next step is to add another audio track. And this is where we will be recording our MIDI sample too. So we're gonna do actually, yeah, let's do stereo, uh, mono actually. So even though it is stereo, we're gonna be only sending one side of the bus over from the auxiliary track to our audio track, which will be fine because the kick is in mono any anyways. So we're gonna create our new bus. Let's go 1920, an unused bus. Bring it up to Unity so that enough signal is coming through. And let's go down to 19 here so that this signal 
from this bus is being sent to this track. We're going to record enable. We're going to make sure that our signal is coming through. As you can tell, with that hit, uh, we had signal coming through here, so it looks like we're good. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is record our audio track. So I'm going to click record here, and it's going to start recording on our audio track. We're going to go to our Easy Drummer, and there we go. <laughs> Hopefully that, yep, see right there, we have our new kick drum hit. The next step that we want to do is trim this down so that we don't have, so that we can accurately place this sample where our uh, current kick drum hits are. So I'm going to bring this down, zoom in a lot, right to the beginning. Make sure that it still sounds. Cool. I'm going to bring this back a little bit too. Some of this will probably end up getting chopped off, but that's okay. So now that we have our kick sample all trimmed up and ready to go, the next step that we want to make sure, this is important that we do this step in our workflow, is we want to copy this right now. So I'm going to go this here, uh, Command C. So now this is copied to our clipboard. I'm going to actually just delete this for now. And the next step is we want to make sure this button here, this is tab to transient. Essentially what this does is allows you to click the tab button on your keyboard and it goes and it jumps to the next transient in the audio track. Now, in according to the order of operations, as I guess is what we're going to call it, what we want to do now is highlight both our kick and our new audio. I'm going to change this real quick to kick kick replacement. We want to group these two together. And keep in mind, you want to copy the kick replacement before you group these two together. And I'll show you why here in a second. So command G for group. And we're going to call this kick replacement group. All right. And it's you can see it's highlighted down here. So this group is now active. And you can see when I click on this, it highlights both tracks. Now, the next step that we want to do is start tabbing to our transients. And you can see it's jumping and it's just picking up certain hits within this track and this is i believe our first kick hit and we do command v and there we go that is our first drum replacement now we want to tab to our next i believe this is our next one it's important to be aware of what your kick hits will look like and kind of making sure that if there is bleed on your kick track that you're not replacing the kick drum on to like a cymbal hit that just happened to get picked up by your kick microphone. So we're going to do command V and I'm going to quickly go through this and we're going to replace all these hits. So bear with me here. All right. So I replaced a decent amount of kick hits here, as you can see. Now, before I move on and show you kind of how to bring these all together. I want to just talk about the key commands that I was using here because the this will really help you efficiently paste each of these kick hits in. Now, obviously I'm using tab to tab to each transient and command V to paste each of these sample replacements where the transients are. However, something that you should be aware of hopefully is your R and T buttons which help you zoom in and out and having these turned on 
with this A to Z button here. So you can turn this off. And if I click R and T, which I'm doing now, nothing is happening. But if I turn it on, I can zoom in and out. And these are just very helpful for this workflow. So making sure that you can zoom in and out to see where each kick transient is, is very helpful. And finally, the last thing that you should be aware of is you can use Command Z to obviously undo your last move. This comes in handy when you tab too far and there you kind of miss a transient. Because what would usually happen is, is if you un, if you kind of click away from your group, what you'll have to do is tab all the way back from the beginning. So if you just Command Z, it'll take out the last replacement that you just made and you'll be able to start a lot closer to where you actually are in your drum replacement. So let's take a listen to what we have now. I'm gonna mute this normal kick ungroup obviously and we're gonna see what we have so as you can see that sounds a lot better than our normal let's take a listen to our normal kick here Just in general, it comes out a lot more, it sounds better. So this was definitely a good move on this particular on this particular track. So there it is, an outlined workflow of drum replacement in Pro Tools. Now this process will change a little bit depending on the replacement plugin that you are using, but this works very well, especially if you're using a sound from a sample library and want to efficiently replace your recorded sound. So that is it for today's video. Hopefully I answered any questions you had on this process. Make sure to like and comment what your favorite drum replacement plugin is. And until next time, everyone, have a good day.